Anyway, the situation is, as it previously was... Isn't this all... Something doesn't feel right. This is, a, this is a lot brighter than it's supposed to be, isn't it? But again, I've kinda messed with the settings and it's supposed to be a lot warmer. And it, but... have, have I gone completely mental as this too bright? Maybe, maybe I, this is the first time I'm actually listed. Hold on. No, I have... A, I have a sneaking suspicion this was supposed to be... different. Huh. I guess this was... I still remember this was so utterly, completely dark. I mean, I don't expect some expert shading on this, but this is supposed to be a fairly dark game. Hold on. a noticeable difference between before and now? Well, I, I, apparently I haven't gone crazy. What the hell was that supposed... I mean, look at it. The light sources are now set properly. You actually have a view distance. You cannot view infinitely ahead of you until you see a wall. It's, Oh, of course I need to set the resolution, but still, it's... Um... I wouldn't necessarily call this an improvement, because it makes the game a lot more difficult. Being able to see ahead of you... <laughs> ...makes things significantly easier, so... Three zombies here and some of the four life essences. Then again, I don't mind. Exactly, it's. Um, the tension in this game doesn't necessarily stem from it being dark outright. But the difficulty does. And the tension partly stems from the difficulty. So I don't want to take anything away from this game, especially as. As relatively primitive graphically as it is, I definitely wouldn't want to take any of its tricks away. See, the problem is, as soon as I jump into that water, I know what lurks within, and um, actually, I know even before I jump into the water, so that's why I'm hesitant to do so. Oh, 
Alright, so some circle strafing and I killed both the cultists. That's of course... Whoa! This is of course a guy over... Over there. There we go. So far so good. Of course I have to... Have to get rid of all the piranhas. Just for the ease of mind. I don't want them nibbling at me at a critical juncture where I am supposed to fight cultists that will inevitably appear down here. And ruin my day. Oh, great. nasty bastards. I have already remarked on the horrible nature of the things the cultists must have been doing over here. Tying people down underwater with piranhas has to be one of the one of the more cruel things they've been doing, although I haven't seen the full extent of the ultra's capacity, so I may be wrong about this. There are of course two ways I can go. One way down here, so that I can get the invisibility globe and continue on my merry way. And another way leads directly onwards. And I believe that's the path I should take. Because at this point I have at least a bit of the level mapped out. And I need to make strategic use of all the power-ups I get. Because things will get difficult later on. I cannot just charge ahead so early on. I sure as hell will do so later. So let's save that invisibility for just a while longer. For now, let's proceed up this corridor. See, this is fairly brightly lit. Bastard. I have needlessly lost five health! Yeah. See, I chose to set them on fire rather than letting them jump into the water because I knew uh, the medium difficulty. I just couldn't hack it at anything higher. I just couldn't. I've tried. Whoa, that's um, that's that's quite nice. I've tried, and a bagavo can vouch for that. It wasn't easy. I think he can, as far as I remember. Anyway, it was um, it was quite a horrible experience, actually. I mean, never mind the fact that after you l reload the game on a lower difficulty, it, it theoretically loads you on a... The thing is completely messed up. There are five difficulty levels and allegedly, if you pick the fourth one and you reload the game, it loads you on the second one. If you pick the fifth one, it reloads you on the first one, to an extent. For instance, the, the level's layout kind of stays the same, I think, but the... Yeah, this is this is the old school medium. This is the this is the medium as in uh, the sort of gamer that has played enough FPS games up until this point will beat this game at some point after some effort with medium difficulty. Damn it! Oh no, am I about to die? Yes, I am. I can use the... I will use the doctor's bag right the hell now. Where is he? Where is he? 
Oh, there goes my doctor's bag. That's that's it. That's it. And I'm not even on full health. How do you like that? <sighs> well, oh, well, the game is tough. It's fairly famous. It's graphically unimpressive at this point, as is to be expected. But the gameplay is, is quite nice and quite rewarding. Oh no, to get over there I need to proceed onwards first. The gameplay is fairly nice. That much hasn't aged. Although as previously noted, it is difficult to get through. At least for me, I guess there are quite a few players out there who wouldn't have as much difficulty as I do because... Uh, I don't specialize in much of anything, which should be fairly obvious. I play all sorts of things, and I'm not great at any of them. I have another Doctor's bag, so that's 100 health I can restore on the fly if I need to. I have 100 health, which is full, and there are full life essences over there, which restore about 15 points each. So if I need to regen some health, that's the first place I should head to. I'm still alive by that point. Flipping this switch will allow me to proceed. See, I don't like what I need to do here. It's probably the... It's probably the safest bet to just take these stupid gargoyles and push them all the way into the water. One of the things I dislike about this procedure is that you do not hear a splash. It's a huge stone statue. It's supposed to make a splash the moment it falls into the water. It'll be the most climactic thing ever. The most satisfying part. You see a gargoyle, stone fall, and you push him into the water. He splashes down there. You congratulate yourself, pat yourself on the back. Good job. Gargoyles in water. But no, you don't get that. You don't even get that much. Obviously, if you see a locked doll in this game, you know what to expect. Someone is there on the other side, pretty much inevitably. You don't just get a closed door with nothing. Also, there's more to it than that. Beyond this closed door is a trigger. So guys, trigger the warning, opening the door causes the Galgos to come to life. And now I am setting Galgos on fire underwater. Let me restate that. I am burning monsters while submerged in a liquid. And that's not gasoline either. Well, who's shooting gargoyles under- Whoa! He was right on top of me! Under the sea... Okay, where's the gargoyle? Where is it? See, I don't necessarily have to kill all the monsters on a level. It's just most satisfying to do so, because... Just leaving them alone doesn't seem like... What? Is it dead? How did it die? What happened? Perhaps it eventually... Burnt down? Huh. This game is fairly mysterious to me. As far as I can tell, things um, 
don't burn as quickly under the waters. So that's um, that's that's nice, I guess. That's an improvement, kinda. The fact that they do burn and they do burn at all is uh, somewhat counterintuitive. Two life essences to pick up here. I guess I should once again backtrack because I will pick up one of them eventually. And I would rather pick one of these up. There's one to the left, one to the right. Is there another one here? Nope. So there are only two life essences here. Of course, if I don't make the jump to the bridge, I fall down and I need to go all the way around, which isn't what I want to have happen. Standard procedure, light it on fire, open a door, toss it, wait. And you have to round corner this, this way. Because otherwise consequences will be quite painful. This becomes especially evident Once you reach that winding staircase. Yeah, that, was, that place was such an impossible challenge. Here's why I probably should use the napalm launcher. Then again, I, I don't feel like using it against zombies. Of all the enemies in the game, I can't just watch them burn. Okay, open the door, get out. Simple enough, right? No, don't! Excellent. Now it's... Oh, man. Now I... They don't even swim. Whoa. Well, at least I shot his crotch under water and he burst into flames. That's something you don't get to say every day. <laughs> it's, they should read flammable or something, but hey, who cares? Wait a minute. Gasoline is renowned for being explosive. It com... It, well, at the very least it's combustive, which probably is not the same thing as far as the English language is concerned, but... I do recall that in the process of refining oil into something useful for lanterns on one hand and into, the, into everything else, they were left with something they figured was completely useless to them. Just some combustible... In the night, exchanging lances. Extra liquid. Yeah, it does track my kills, so it's a measure of progress. You could theoretically beat the level, killing as few monsters as possible, just sneak around. It just it just doesn't seem right. As a bonus, you get life essences from some of the monsters and they heal you up. On the other hand, you don't necessarily, necessarily have to go after every last one of them in the first place. And sometimes trying to kill them all will make you lose health in the first place, so it might be not worth it. Ah yes, uh, right, of course you need the right proportions. Yeah, I do have a point. And of course this is, um, at least from my perspective, from my non-natural scientific perspective, this is uh, mostly a linguistic matter. 
Because now we know the facts, but how we put facts in words is also an interesting thing. So in certain scenarios, you can make it explode. Now, do you call it explosive because in certain scenarios it can explode? Or should we only call things explosive when they are very likely to explode in quite a few scenarios? And how do you describe these scenarios? How far do you go? It's like the... It's like the solubility problem. To define something as soluble, you need to make a definition that's uh, conditional. Because something that's soluble is something that can um, become a solution with water. But you need to submerge it first. Similarly, you can define bravery as as a character trait that when someone is put to the test of a given kind, let's say if someone were to face a dragon, that person would not run away, that person would not turn out to be a coward. So, it's a conditional definition. And it also bears asking in these um, circumstances, is, does it even make sense to call someone brave if it never gets tested? So you can have a person who would go for the dragon if there was a dragon to go for. But if there are no dragons, I guess it's also a case of how the hell can you know whether that person is or is not brave. You know, just some freshman stuff off the top of my head. Of course, beyond the stained glass wall... Stained glass wall? Well, it is a wall. Yes, you might refer to it as a window of sorts. Such a Whoa! Burn! Yeah, that's another, uh, that's another thing about the definition, but it, it, it was mostly... I can't even recall all of the details, but I think there was a problem with defining conditional things. And defining conditions in general is, is quite problematic, quite difficult, because... Uh, to strike a match and to actually have it light on you... is not as simple as you might think. Because for it to work, for instance, you need to have oxygen in the atmosphere. Otherwise, it's not gonna work. But do you include there is oxygen in the atmosphere of the planet on which you are striking a match in the definition of compass, uh, in the definition of um, it being something you can light on fire? You can reach all these weird conclusions. Right, guys. The most difficult part of the level, as far as I have seen so far, is ahead of me now. So I need to pick up the invisibility globe. It's not even a globe, it's a little tiny, tiny Ku Klux Klan robe. I need to pick up the invisibility power-up. The and then storm the most difficult part of the level, just immediately traverse the terrain. Because it runs out so quickly, the invisibility runs out almost... Also, it's not immediate, it takes a minute or two, but to get through the level, even running, we be quite focused. And then, once I reach my spot, I only get a limited amount of time to, to take them down. I mean, you are among cultists, they are also wearing robes, maybe they just... As long as you're wearing white, they consider you some sort of a cultist, maybe even a greater cultist than they are. I mean, look, this is how the power-up looks like. What does it remind you of? And it's the only thing around here. As soon as I pick this up, all hell breaks loose. I need to go to that place. 
Well, fair enough. Yeah, is there a difference? I still remember the South Park episode where there wasn't really a perceived one. Oh, the kids were so elated to be dressed as ghosts. Alright. I need to figure out what I want to dispatch them with. I mostly like to use my shotgun. And the problem is I only have 24 shots. <sighs> I'll have to make do. Alright. Here goes nothing. Keep your fingers crossed, guys. As soon as I pick that up, it's a mad dash. Alright, go, 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 go. Emerge. Submerge. Go, 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 go. It'll, it will run out before I get the wanted. It, it will just run out. Open the door. Go through. Go up. Didn't get that. I didn't even get that. Those pointers as hell. <sighs> well, I got all the way over here and it ran out immediately. I should have used it earlier so as not to lose health on these guys. <sighs> all right. Of course I need to keep an eye out for secrets, if there are any additional ones I need to pick up on them. Notice them and get them. I need all the help I can get. I've lost a bit of health, which is lamentable. See, there's another cultist over there. If I can toss this TNT stick, a bundle of TNT, where it needs to go. Is that right? Yes, it is. I will, of course, have to go back and heal up, but I don't mind. Whoa, look, another cultist. Can I get him? Nope. Oh, come on. <sighs> you know, stabbing rats with the pitchfork is a survival tactic. Rats are by far the most annoying enemies in this game. And as far as I have seen, the most, the most lethal to you as well. They just come out at you in droves and nibble you down. So fortunately, I don't have to deal with rats over here. Now you can deal with bats, but the bats at least have the common courtesy not to attack you. You don't hurt them, they don't hurt you, you just live in perfect harmony together. But the rats are merciless. They will come after you every goddamn time. This is going fairly well, and you need to be methodical. You just jump up there with your fancy little jump boots, or you're gonna be screwed. You're gonna get shot. With a shotgun, with a tommy gun, you're gonna get stabbed by the zombies. Well, well sliced with the. sliced with an axe, I guess. Uh, 
<sighs> my bindings are kind of awkward. It's R to look up, but it's T to type. So sometimes. Whoopsie. <laughs> Sorry for the serving, you zombies. Nice. I think it's time to go back, heal up, come back, um, and deal with them. Hmm. Now there are two life essences, I don't want to pick this one up, this one is for later. This one was for now. Unfortunately you cannot pick up life essences and carry them with you. You can pick up entire canisters of fuel. You can carry a napalm launcher with you alongside your flare gun, your pitchfork, your shotgun, your endless supply of sticks of dynamite, ammo for all this stuff, but you cannot carry hearts. That'll be too gruesome. No, you leave them on the floor. Eat them up later on once you need them. All right. Exactly. I mean, it's the most it's the most commonsensical thing. You take the hearts and you stuff them into the doctor's bag, but no. You do have you do raise an important point. Yes, considering how how overburdened I already am with all the ammo and guns, I just don't have the space to carry the hearts. Whoa! Get over here! Come on! Bring it on! There we go! Alright! Well, yeah, I know I've missed a few times over the... No, trying my best here, guys. Trying my best. Hopefully things won't get too hectic right now. Oh, look at that cult. Look at that cultist. Look at him. I mean, not too close. He's gonna shoot you, but still. Nope! Preemptively tossing dynamite into such spots seems to be the best way of solving problems. Sometimes miss, and you have a very limited supply of dynamite, so you need to be careful with that. But regardless, it's just... I think the way to go now is to jump over there, grab a Kimbo, go through this corridor and shoot everything down. Now if I get low on health, I can just go back. Strangers in the night. Exchanging glances. Because on one hand, I want to make the best use of a Kimbo I can. It just gives you... Yeah, I've tried that last time. It didn't work so well. On the... Well, that's, that's my counter-argument exactly. It just... I wouldn't necessarily... Do you believe there are such things as good one-liners, or do you just believe that all of them have to be cheesy and therefore bad? Because I'm quite a proponent of one-liners, to an extent. Because of the frame rate. Uh, do you honestly believe that the speed of the game is tied to the refresh rate? Wait, a hundred refresh rate? Uh, no, I mean, yes, but no. I mean, the CLTs I had back in the day mostly well went only up to 60 hertz, and that's as far as I set them. If you don't know when you don't know it. Hmm. I mean, you mean the, um, the frame rate was higher, so it made things easier for Twitch shooting? Doesn't really help you. The game renders at such a... No, 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 I think the, uh, the maximum frame rate here is... 
kind of locked. It's set. Why is it so low? It's at 40 something. Huh. Imagine that. Alright, anyway, I will pick up a Kimbo, try to do my best. And if that fails, I will resort to the good old strategy of tossing dynamite round corners around the, uh, the winding stairwell, which you will see in a moment. Bam. Doctor's back! Doctor's back! Doctor's back! Doctor's back! Doctor's back! Looking away when you feel safe, not the best of ideas. You shouldn't feel safe at all. Paranoia is the way to go, clearly. Backtracking for supplies is the way to go as well. Let me remind you, this is the medium difficulty. This is the difficulty for the average gamer. Which I guess accurately describes me in this context. So disappointing, isn't it? But still. See, the problem was I had the boots selected. So when I activated the item, it activated the boots instead of the doctor's bag. And then I went to the doctor's bag to activate it instead of deactivating the boots first. So I had to go back to the boots and deactivate them afterwards. Which kind of distracted me on one hand, but saved me a bit of the charge on the boots. The, f the result I wanted to avoid was actually deactivating the boots and not getting to the doctor's bag in time, and as a consequence, dying in the process. That would have been perfect. See, this stands out. There's something wrong with this thing here. This, this uh, just doesn't blend in at all. But you can't open it. It's just it's just not openable. Come on, open. What open? What open? Come oh. on. Either way, here's the winding staircase I've been talking about so much. What? Where did the zombie die and why? See, when it comes to one-liners... Come back to a previous topic, I... And when it comes to pretty much anything, really... I have a very hard time understanding the concept of something being cheesy. It just, it just doesn't mesh with the way I perceive things. Actually, cheesy, um... It's not even about cheesy. Um, it's it's about something either related or similar in some way. Let's not fall out the window. Um, things being hammy, hammy acting, as it's called. I need a key. Just don't quite get the concept. I mean, I get it in theory. I understand what it is supposed to mean, but my threshold for accepting. Something that people commonly consider as hammy seems to be extremely high. Back to the game for a very short bit. This is the moon doll key. Uh, this is the moon key. Uh, again, this is the moon doll for which you need the moon key, which you will acquire eventually as soon as you get through the other dolls. This is probably the final part. There's something you can unlock I need here. A key. 
But once again, you need a key. This will probably be the final... Uh, if not the final room, then the final section of the map. But you need the moon key, which you'll probably get as soon as you get the spider key and proceed through this area, through the spider area, I guess. So that's the order. You need to get over here, but first you need to go through the spider doors. Anyway, as I was saying, uh, my tolerance for what people consider hammy is extraordinarily high. And I guess this means that I can enjoy quite a few more things than ordinary people. Ordinary, I don't know, maybe it's other people that have an extremely low tolerance. They consider so many things overacted. I don't know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm histrionic, maybe it just seems too natural to me to think in these exaggerated terms about everything in real life. I also don't like the way people... I don't like quite a few things, actually, but I guess that's quite common. I don't like the way people underplay and undervalue things such as teenage angst and, in general, certain emotional reactions. In a context in which um, an intellectual response is not expected, but... So it's not a dichotomy in the sense of it being an emotional reaction instead of a rational one, a rational treatment of the situation. It's just... Undervaluing emotions isn't necessarily what I'm going for, which is the thing I have so far described to an extent, which kind of displeases me. Is it about people undervaluing a certain mindset? It's not about, it's not about being overly emotional, because that's probably not the way I would describe myself, and that's probably not the sort of thing I would necessarily value all that much in itself. Maybe it's about a bit of theatricality. Or at least something people would refer to as theatricality if it wasn't earnest. I don't know, I think this game is going for a, a sense of dread, at least to an extent. I've had Diff call it a horror game, and to an extent I I am willing to agree with that description, with, um, with of course, a caveat. It's not, the, it's not a horror game in, in the common sense, it's not a survival horror game, I should say. In the modern sense, or in any sense of the term. But other than that, there, there are whole elements to the game. It is definitely, it can definitely be scary. Was it all just this one single cultist screaming in short succession all of these phrases? Because I wouldn't be surprised. By the way, the game is showering me with life essences. Look at this. It's just absurd. It almost seems as if I'm playing on a lower difficulty, which I wouldn't be surprised about. I have not lowered it myself. No, oh. an incendiary device. See, I knew what the. <sighs> Actually, no. You pull this... <laughs> you should have told me. I know that this lowers the pillar so that you can get to the akimbo. Wait. <coughs> but it doesn't remove the trap. I never actually went for the akimbo, so I haven't felt... I've not fallen for that. Ever before. 
<laughs> uh, the utter naivete on my part. I need a key. <laughs> yeah. All right, so you need the skull key to proceed through here. Which outlines the general order in which the level has to be completed, as far as I'm concerned. Now, it doesn't necessarily logically follow that this is the order, but this is the way things are connected. This is the way things are the closest to each other. Theoretically, you could get the spider key first, and then the, the skull key. You would just have to backtrack a bit more. So even, even though the game is designed to force you to backtrack to the places you have already... Uh, I mean, that's the definition of backtracking, isn't it? Even though the game forces you to backtrack, it mostly forces you to backtrack the shortest amount you possibly can, which is, I guess, reasonable. So I assume you have to complete this area ahead of us first. Then you get the skull key, go through here. Once you get the skull key in this area behind these doors, you acquire the spider key, after which you finally get the moon key and get the hell out. And I might... I might be right in assuming that this has been the case throughout all the all the levels so far. So when I was um, asked to enter the password back in the either, uh, back in one of the previous levels, it might have just been the common sense answer to enter Skull Spider Moon. Because it's the order in which you have solved the doll puzzles previously every single time. But I I don't know for certain. Not off the top of my head anyway. I would have to review the footage. This seems extremely simple. Maybe it's because I'm somewhat distracted and therefore paradoxically even I can concentrate easier. See, this place is a goddamn trap, and I know, because this is where I've died last time. If you recall, these things open up. And out come the cultists. Now, what activates these dolls, as far as I know, is the doll over the opening. And it can be opened by, opened by a zombie, not just by you. So things can get dicey really quickly. Hello, zombie. There we go. Now hopefully the door will not open. Hold on. I can manually open this. Oh yes, shotgun shells. Thankfully. I can blow this up manually. And lighting the fuse gives me a little bit of time to move away. Instead of just letting the TNT explode on impact, which is still... Surprising in how that works. Um, this leads absolutely nowhere. Get up! That's the problem with zombies, they do get up. You can even blow them with dynamite, and if you don't blow them thoroughly enough, they will get up. This is the way the level was designed. You open this doll, and behind you appear the cultists. They don't swarm you immediately, you just proceed onwards through the doll, most likely. You open the doll, you go through it. So you don't notice them. Only when you backtrack, you encounter them on your way back. Except, in that particular scenario last time, where for no good reason, one of the zombies just opened it all up. The cultist sprang up behind me and killed me almost instantly. Heh. <laughs> 
Well, isn't that the case? Do you disagree with my assessment? Do you? Because it seems to be common sense to me. I just got stabbed. Through my own fault. I know, I know, but... Would you disagree with that assessment? Because I just think you've provided me with evidence that this is a fully... Accurate assessment. What the hell? They, they haven't opened. Not yet, anyway. Is something supposed to pass through this? Whoa! Shit! <laughs> By the way, I, I somehow missed this. There were a few bullets for my Tommy gun lying around. But wow. I mean, I was about to explain that my, my take on this was... Fairly simple, I figured. Right, final life essence. I figured that the reason these haven't opened is that you need something to actually pass through the door physically. So when the zombie passed through the door last time, that triggered the thing. Yeah. I mean, this isn't this isn't something you would refer to as a jump skill, quite honestly. Unless you would refer to pretty much everything as a jump skill, unless it's just the pervasive sense of dread. And I don't think a jump skill is any sort of scary moment where something appears on the screen. I just think it's a very particular sort of thing where something just pops up out of nowhere and scares you. What world did you come from? Oh, these open up gradually, I see. I see how you work. I understand you now. And a better, a better understanding of you See, some people will theorize that if you understand someone, it will allow you both to live peacefully together. No, if I understand these guys, it makes it easier for me to kill them. So quite to the contrary. It's interesting, these levels are so flat, it seems as though jumping is unnecessary almost at any point. I think I need to remain focused. Pretty much any point these doors could spring, could spring open and... Whoa, I, I don't like the look of this place. What? Did you hear that? I mean, I assume you did. See, I'm running out of uh, explosions and screaming calls. That's not necessarily the most unusual thing in this game, but okay. See, this is what pisses me off. No cultists. It happened previously. They just swarmed me from all over the place. All of these doors opened. And right now, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Is that a life seed? Invulnerability, reflective shots. Where is everyone? <sighs> oh, 
Well, I don't think this game feels any pity. Last time I was extremely low on health, doing extremely well. Actually, she was... No. Well, you, you do have a point. I, I was doing extremely well, maybe just punished by hubris. I was so proud of myself. So happy with the results, and then... Then came the failure! Still closed. I have a theory, guys. About magic and miracles. Maybe I'm supposed to pick this up and go through the fire. Which seems like the right thing to do, but... But what if I picked it up and instead of going through the file over there, just went all, all the way back here and jumped through the windows here, went through the file over here. Because this is the file I truly want to go through. There's probably something on the other side, I just can't get to it. I don't know, and if it runs out, will it, will it disallow me from entering the file? Does it merely provide you with um, a temporary in invulnerability, a boost in health? I don't know. The problem with those flames was that I couldn't pass through them at all. We've seen it. Hmm. I guess there's only one way to go. Huh. Map is huge. If you're blue and you don't know where to go to, put mm -hmm. on the lids. Anything up there? I mean, I could jump and. Doesn't seem to be anything up there. Just... Alright, I think there's only one way to go now. Um... Reflective shots does not reflect the dynamite. Getting surrounded by the zombies would be highly undesirable. Let me just put it that way and leave it at that. I just don't get it. I'm thoroughly confused right now. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. So you pick that up and these doors spring open. Now how did that happen previously? You, you know I didn't do that last time. I absolutely didn't. I was right here, all, all over here, and they sprang open on their own. Are they time-based? What the hell? I believe I got treated unfairly. <laughs> Whoa! No! No! No, leave me be! the game sometimes throws at you. It's, it's quite magnificent to behold. Oh no, oh no, oh no.
No, 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 it, it just, it wasn't supposed to trigger and get a trigger, didn't it? You pick the key, the gargoyles activate, right? Oh no, you pick the key, zombies pop up. That's a new one. Get up so I can kill you again. Now to be fair, they are giving me the tools. They are giving me the tools to solve the problems. All right, gargoyle. I know your shtick. Just, just. Wait, this isn't the. This might be a door that leads to some place that's next to the thing where you are supposed to go eventually. You blew it up! You maniac, you blew it up! See, I know that I just picked up the, the flame key, the... Yeah, the flame key, I guess. Or the file key. <laughs> it's not a it's not a proper official term, it's just the way I like to refer to it, because it hey, there's a little flame on it. I guess flame key would also make sense. That's even more sense. Now where is this place again? Sorry. Oh, actually I'm not sorry, that's the Oh miserable bastard. Oh, so this is the place that is behind the pla Once again, this map is... These maps are so complicated. Now, you know where this place is, right? But describing it in words would be kind of difficult. It's the room behind the room... Not behind the room. Around the... I guess it's the room after the room with the pillars and the akimbo. Behind the uh, behind the hidden pillars, it's the room with the dead bodies and bullets in the walls. It's yeah, like pretty much every other room. I don't like this. I don't like this at all. I mean, I know that obviously I'm supposed to go through the file key doll, but that's clearly not happening until I explore everything else. Look at this. This is a narrow corridor that leads to a dead end. Now, when it when when it comes to me, everything leads to a dead end. Just a matter of time. Please don't hurt me, game. Please don't hurt me. See, I know this little psychological trick. You're gonna be like, oh, Hello, you're over here. You went to this wall that's different from the other walls, clearly expecting something to happen. You are prepared for it, mentally. You know that something is about to happen. You can feel the atmosphere getting extremely tense. So you are stressed out. So we will do absolutely nothing for a while. So that you, then you will think to yourself, oh, so nothing is going to happen, ha ha. You are just psyching me out. And then we will do something that will terrify you. And then you will think, haha, so you are trying to fool me into thinking that there will be something scary after nothing scary. Uh, but then you will get fooled thinking that there will be something scary after nothing scary. Haha. -ha. No, that's just. Uh, there actually isn't anything scary over here, so I got. I get double meta psyched out. Okay, I'm leaving. Do -do 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 -do. Leaving the room, leaving the room. Yes, yes I do. 
I'm probably I'm probably doing a very poor job of, of showing it right the hell now. But the well spots Yeah. I mean the Yeah, but then again I probably am the sort of emotional person that does find certain things most scary. And I think that this amplifies my enjoyment of certain things. Uh, for instance, the train level, which was uh, two levels before, uh, or three levels before this one, there was a section in it when I got genuinely frightened at some point. Because of one, one scripted event, I was completely unprepared for emotionally. And that was thrilling. I mean, that's one of the highlights of the entire playthrough, I guess. But it also shows that I, I've been playing this for a while, so that's one moment that really stands out to me. Most of the time it's just it's just carnage with no end. Sometimes sometimes you sometimes you get frightened. Sometimes I get frightened when I get put in these horrible circumstances where I'm trapped in a room full of zombies, although mostly I get the means to eliminate them so it's not that horrifying. I mean, is your stance that nothing over the hill should be even remotely scary? In which circumstance, I will have to ask you a question that's fairly open-ended and that I have no idea what you will answer to, so that's one of those interesting questions, not like the ones I usually ask in the polls. What do you find scary? Yeah. And it's difficult to explain as well, because how the hell are you going to, to justify this, the scariness or the lack of scariness or something in your subjective experience of it? Not just as a pure biological fact or something, which can quite, quite simply be explained, but um, the actual emotional experience. See, I think the fundamental problem that you are hitting here is that, is that you have certain expectations that you also transpose on other people over here. I don't view, I don't view emotions as anything negative or unhandly, so I don't really deal with these sort of issues at all. But then again, I'm, I don't necessarily conform to any sort of social stereotypes, so I, I might as well. Yeah, I think watching it from afar gives you a bit of distance, emotionally. You don't have to deal with this crap yourself. And if I was watching it on a stream, I probably wouldn't wouldn't fret at all, either. I mean, yeah, it's kind of dark, there's all these zombies, but you're safe behind the screen, you're even safer behind the screen than I am. You don't have to deal with any of this. And there are real consequences. I need a key. I need a key. Oh, you have to backtrack, oh. All right, so I don't have the file key. Uh, <laughs> why are the Galgos not alive quite yet? God damn it, Galgos. You will come back to haunt me. And, hold on, this is new. Um, I did not have a problem with that, which I guess um, can be more of a problem in and of its own. I mean, I... I wouldn't say that I necessarily had nightmares, because that's a different sort of reaction. Oh, look, it's an, it's an alternative exit. Um... But, uh... Oh, and it's a different place as well. And there's a zombie over here that I need to dispatch. Um... Uh, the question is, does it also... Uh, God damn it, uh, I can find the term. In positive emotional terms, in terms of positive emotional experiences, do you also... Oh my god, it's all... Hold on! 
the way I... The way it immediately comes to my mind almost, almost makes it sound clinical, which is kind of worrying. It's like, do you, do you experience flattened effect? Because that's something uh, psychopaths have to deal with in their daily lives. Um, uh, does your experience of... Uh, of lower emotional responses to stimuli also translate to positive experiences as well. Do you um, do you have difficulty experiencing extreme joy and exuberance, or is it just that you have difficulty experiencing scary things and negative emotions like that? I'm not I'm not speaking out against stoicism as either a conscious choice or. Obviously, against it is something that you just experience as a part of your life involuntarily, as a, as not as just a stance, but as a, as a modality, I guess, as a way of experiencing life. I mean, what I'm asking is is, uh, is a different thing. Is it that you generally have a, a sort of tempered emotional response to all things? Do you experience extreme exuberance in certain circumstances? Extreme, I don't know, because I, I guess scariness is, is one just one particular emotion, so you probably won't get scared at roller coasters, etc. But do you do you experience extreme joy? Extreme. Uh, Extreme exuberance, do you find things extremely funny, extremely offensive, extremely satisfying, etc, etc? Do you experience strong visceral emotions um, in a positive way, all? Yeah, because I was just trying to figure out whether it's just that fear is not something you experience, or that all, all of your emotions just have a cut-off point at which beyond which you do not ex you do not exceed beyond which you do not go so basically you have a cap on your emotions beyond which you cannot proceed which has its merits so i i know that i mean i've realized that a while ago that I make it sound clinical like it's kind of it's kind of upsetting the way it, it sounds like such a horrible thing that you're you don't know by the sound of things you're just cut off from certain areas of human experience and that's just horrible but then again then again that's uh, that's not a unique thing for instance just by being a man you just biologically you will be unable to experience what women experience is an orgasm, so that's also one way in which you are disconnected from something that generally, biologically, um, is a human experience. It's just unavailable to you, and that's uh, that's part of life. We don't experience all the things, and we all experience things to a certain extent differently. The fact that we can communicate at all just speaks volumes about how many things we have in common as human beings. By the way, I'm proceeding towards a... See? Explosives! Um, motion detectors, probably. And then, of course, things can be said about... Whoa! Things can be said about... Um, social pressure and masculinity and all that, but still... I... Um, I'm not even ide ideologically leaning that way, but from your from your own description, it makes it sound like a natural response that's uh, that's more biologically oriented than anything that's been culturally um, internalized in terms of um, inhibitions you have acquired in life, I don't know, childhood, whatever. It doesn't sound like something culturally caused, although... <laughs> although we could go that way and just analyze you in, in, in those terms and figure that maybe, just maybe, in terms of certain experiences you were not exposed to certain stimuli and therefore you have not 
developed certain emotional reactions to. Or perhaps you get desensitized to feel in some way. I don't know, is it underdeveloped? I mean, uh, to a certain extent, this is the sort of thing you, uh, that drill sergeants try to accomplish, right? They uh, try to blunten people's reactions to, to fear, to... But generally, this, this, this sort of... Um, these sort of reactions to mistreatment that might naturally come as part of a, a human experience just to make people tougher, so it definitely has its upsides, as I'm sure you easily realize. Yeah, I mean, you definitely could think of it as that. It's also quite inspiring to realize how differently people can experience things. Because ordinarily we... Ugh. At least from what I've read, people tend to assume that other people think and feel, etc. Experience the world exactly like they do. Which obviously is untrue, but... Which obviously is untrue, but the moment you assume that people experience the world differently from you, I'm about to die. The moment you assume that people experience the world completely differently from you, or just intellectually all hell breaks loose, how the hell are you supposed to know how they experience the world exactly? How on earth? Your mind and your qualia are the only you have access to directly. You can't access other people's minds, so... If other minds are so different, so foreign compared to your own... I mean, this is a, this is a, just a, a simple, trivial thing, and this is something we can conceptualize quite easily, so this isn't that big of a deal, but in certain other scenarios where you just can't put things in words, this can... This can become a much bigger of a problem. the fact that they can kind of see me and they keep shouting the cultist madness at me and there's very little I can do about it. And I think I'm Nick, I'm close to the doll beyond which there's the file doll key I will eventually acquire to get through the file. This is such a convoluted level. Once again, you have to keep track of all these things. Yeah, at least they can't lean, but neither can I. Nepal, uh, this will open up and there will be something horrible behind it. Well, whoopee fucking do, that's what happens every time. Um, but the question I have to ask you guys, um, because it just, it just begs to be answered at this point, is, do you think it's a wealthy trade? I mean, it's, it's not even about video games, but in general, do you think it's better to feel strong emotions? positive and negative, or do you think it's better to not only be able, but to always keep a clear head, to be able to logically analyze things in front of you, instead of having your judgment clouded by emotions? Because these are two separate sides to the same coin, and this is something I've been pondering previously. If I could give up on my emotionalist, uh, if, 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 I don't know, if emotionality? and my emotional nature, 
should I and would I? Well, yeah, I guess it depends on what you value, but that's the sort of answer you could give to pretty much anything. I guess to an extent it is a subjective question in terms of would you prefer th it this way or that way? What sort of benefits do you see? What sort of downsides do you see? Etc. Mm. I mean, if you were completely emotionless, would you even feel the need to make friends? What's the point? Um, and that's the thing with psychopaths, as far as I believe. They just um, use people. They understand how they work, but they, um, they are not part of the system. Well, by that token, I could answer that I have no idea what it is like to be... Ah. Holy shit, wait a minute. I was about to say that from that perspective, I do not know what it is like to be more stoic, but on the other hand, it might, it might just be that I have access to something you don't. It's not that I experience things in this way, particular way, and you don't, and therefore you have no idea. You you access it in a different way. You have I have no idea what it is like for you. Maybe it's that I have access to certain things you don't, but also can can grasp what it is like for you. It's like being colorblind. A person that is not colorblind uh, can get a lot easier what it is like to be colorblind because you can tell them, oh. If you, you, you know this color? Imagine seeing this color as that color. Imagine both of them seeming the same to you. All right, that's a lot easier to understand than uh, to tell to a colorblind person, okay, you see this color? Now imagine being able to see two completely separate colors um, instead of just seeing it as this color. It's a completely different situation. Because even though in the first case, you still have some imagining to do. You still have to take into account, okay, okay, I see it as the same, but now I see it as two separate things. It's kind of difficult to put myself in those shoes. In the second situation, it's a lot more... <sighs> exactly. Because, yeah, you asking someone to reduce their experience to something... To something they know, it seems a lot more simple. Uh, a lot more simple. It seems a lot more simple. It's a lot simpler than just um, than trying to imagine something you have no access to. And it goes back to quite a few. The file key. Quite a few thought experiments. Obviously. going on let me remind you this is the penultimate level this is this is it I, whoa oh my I am not going back this way oh am I no I'm not no No, I believe you only live once. <laughs> yes, it is, because after this one, there is the ultimate level, the final level, the boss fight. 
So I guess this is the final proper level, as far as I know. But it is technically the penultimate level. This is the great temple. Haha, <laughs> you are supposed to dodge the rockets! And if you fail to dodge the rockets, you die! Yay. One, two, three. Three, two, one. Two, one, three. One, two, th what? Got ya! Now what? I'm low on health, by the way. Yuppie doopie doo. Whoa! No! People don't mess around. So first I w first I jumped through the corridor with the rocket launchers, then I went to an elevator with flamethrowers from both sides. Exactly. But you know, here's the kicker. If you stay in the elevator too long, you will get shot with rockets after going through all of that. Oh, you do have a point. That's why it's the fire key. Yes. Quite so. Come on, Gargoyle, I know you want it. Alright, this is the way towards... Uh, what about the spider key? Okay, I got the file key. Now time to unlock the file doll and get to the place that will give me the spider key, probably. No, the skull key! The skull key for the spider key for the... Uh, I should save at some point, damn it! Because, yeah, I've got the file key, I need the skull key, the spider key, and the moon key. Three more keys to go. There we go. Nasty gargoyles. Missed you. I missed you so much, gargoyle. Oh, yeah, fight! Fight! Gargoyle versus zombie. Ready? Fight! It was it was not an even match at all. It wasn't even close. The shots, definitely the shots. Gargoyle. Gargoyle, hey. Hey, 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 gargoyle, hey. Hey, screw you, gargoyle. Screw you. Oh, I don't like this. You know, it seems, it seems that you just go there, you pull the switch, and a door opens up. I suspect. Hold on. It's just a picture of a stream. Totally crappy picture, but hey. Look at myself. Let's not click new game! That would be horrifying. Oh, well, maybe not horrifying, still. So. Pretty, pretty upsetting. Oh, by the way, I'm back. You haven't noticed already. I have a feeling, as I was about to say, that uh, as soon as I pull the switch, this might close on me. Although it might not because there's so, there's so little space. You can just run away from the. It won't. It won't close on you quickly enough. Yep. 
knew that was gonna open up. And again, it was this. You bastard! Hmm. See, this is the problem with the blue cloaked cultists. They take your health down so quickly. Especially if there's more, one, more than one of them, you can just die almost immediately. And now I'm low on health? Hold on. I mean, this might just be it, or is this supposed to be a fireplace? This might be the end of the level for all I know. Maybe I am supposed to go back here at the very end and go through the flames. I need to get some health. I'm not in a good shape. Oh, here's some health. Also, I need to remember that I have a variety of weapons, including the napalm launcher. Using the shotgun at range may not be the brightest of my ideas. Then again, the Tommy gun isn't all that great either. At this point, none of these weapons are, especially against some of the tougher enemies. Mm. A doctor's bag! Yeah, but what, what looks behind the corner? Guns akimbo? I think I may know this place. Is it the pillar? Am I behind the pillar? No, this is a new place. Brains. More brains. Almost got hurt by that. Okay, I grow the zombie. And I'm going to be slow and methodical about this. Because if I'm not, I will just die brutally and quickly after going through all this effort, after spending nearly two hours slogging slowly through this level. Forty-seven sticks of dynamite. I can afford to toss them over there. Whew. It's not safe yet. It's getting the. Whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> oh, 
Alright. I think that might be enough, at least for now. I think the original plan is for you to pick up guns akimbo and go in the guns blazing. Take out all the cultists. But that's not the way I chose, and I stand by my decision. What? Um. Oh, oh, look at this! Look at this! Look at him! <laughs> look at him go! Yes! I mean, you've held this. Whoa! I've wasted my flowers! I think another zombie was about to die, and so was he, and possibly the extra damage put him at negative hit points. But if that keeps decreasing, he will eventually just swing back into positive numbers, then go all the way down, and then eventually he will die, unless it just triggers the animation. I don't know. Yeah, see, that's the problem, because if you get close to a guy like this, you take damage from the file, so eventually he might just stumble into me and burn me. That's why I wasn't looking as... I wasn't as looking forward to this as, um, as one might think, but... It's, it's still somewhat hilarious. It's just... partially dangerous as well. I took all of them out with the dynamite, by the way. Glorious. Ah, yes. Skulls with candles, and I got the spider key. Nope, nope, I'm not riding down with you. Yeah, that'll show him. Say hello to my little friend, both of them. Say goodbye to my big friends. Uh... Yeah, that lasts a long time, doesn't it? I need health and I've got health, I've got the doctor's bag. Kinda wasted this. Okay. See, I did not outsmart the game. I thought to myself, ha! You expect me to go down the platform, but I will not. No, no. Something opens up behind you. So if you stay, you'll kinda screw. If you go, you'll probably kinda screw as well. Oh. Oh, you know what? If you go down with this platform, you actually descend into temporary safety. Because the cultists are, are right there, and they won't see you, at least for a while. So I've made the wrong call again. Uh, I don't. I just got... Oh, hold on. Which key did I get? The skull key or the spider key? There are two skulls here, so I would imagine the skull key would be the answer. But at this point, I have no idea. I think I'm two areas. Spider key. Yeah, that makes sense. Because, see, there are these two skulls with candlesticks, so obviously you're gonna get the spider key, duh. Okay, here's my take on this. Logos have mercy. Remember what this area used to look like a moment ago? There were all these flamethrowers you had to go past? Strangers in the night. I guess you have a point, yeah. Exchanging glances. Obviously. 
All they are just extremely messy and that was supposed to be the place for the skull key, but they put the spider key there because, you know, they just felt like it. This place, this place used to have flamethrowers as far as I remember. You had to go past them, you know, time it correctly. But I've wasted so much time, the flamethrowers actually ran out of fuel. Uh, Caleb. Well, Caleb. Actually, I'm, I'm kind of surprised. I didn't expect this to happen at all, but I guess this, um, I guess this is a legitimate way of dealing with, this, with the problem here. You have these flamethrowers and... Well, first of all, um, they kind of excluded him from the cult, which he doesn't like to be thrown out of places. Secondly, um, his god forsake him, which kind of pisses people off, you know. You invest all your time worshipping this uh, amazing, horrible, horrifying deity and it suddenly expels you from its cult. That that kind of sucks, so you kind of vow the revenge. On the other hand, they, they kidnapped his girlfriend and they and they buried him alive in, um, in a shallow tomb. Yeah, I know, it, it's this sort of inconvenience that he's kind of used to dealing with to an extent. No, this is actually the story. Well, you wanna see the intro cutscene? Because I sure as hell don't. The graphics are not as impressive. If I told you that the guy has a fedora on, would you believe me? Because he does. If I told you that I wore a fedora for the last 14 years, would you believe me? Because I did, and I still do. The more you know. Uh, the character was a trench coat. I'm such a maverick, I know. Yeah. So this is the spider doll, and a second spider doll. Actually, I wish I could buy a trench coat. I, I guess they probably they probably don't serve as good of a purpose over here because you kind of need something warmer than just a trench coat in the in the colder months. Although in the rainy, sad little months of both spring and fall, I guess a trench coat would be adequate tile. Just that I haven't found one, but I sure as hell would have wore one had I found one. I was actually trying to find one for a while. Couldn't quite get one. I don't know, it's a, it's not even an ironic thing with me. I... <laughs> I haven't even seen too many film noir... How do you end that sentence? Am I supposed to say noir in films? Film noir is a genre of films. Film noir movies, I guess, which sounds so redundant. It's the moon. It's the monkey. I, I love pronouncing it in this, in this weird fashion. I have no idea why. It's not the monkey. It's the monkey. Because why not? Oh look, it's just no, no, don't, don't stir at the pretty, not even pretty. Oh great. Fuck you, zombies! I guess from it for admiring the scenery. What? 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 
sorry, zombie. I don't swing that way. Don't fall. Don't fall. Don't fall. I haven't seen what the world. <laughs> Monkey, huh? Nope. Oh look, it's super armor! Guys! This- no, this is not it. Is this it? Because I don't think this is it. Because there's still an area that you need the... Skull Key to unlock. The Mali what? Kevin Costner in the Mario Bros. movie? How is that connected to trench coats? No, that was this. What? what? I did? Hold on. Hold on, guys. Let me just investigate. What? This is what the... Might have been a lot easier just to use the boots, but okay. I'm so going to get lost. Hold on. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Go yeah, there are gonna be additional guys here. No, they're not. Uh, sh recently I've been watching the Drew Carey show. It's hilarious at times. Well, damn, I have been through this doll. I definitely have. Wait, how do you get down there? And move. Whoa, no! No, no, no! No! Holy shit, hold on, guys, hold on. Zombie coming through. This guy might just be the death of me. <laughs> Return of the fucking flaming zombie. <laughs> Can't believe this is actually happening. <laughs> yeah, he's just stumbled across the entire. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure, and as far as I can see, the the final area. The final area is what I'm about to explore. I'm so scared. Spent two hours on this. And now here comes the final test. I need to remember that I have the napalm launcher, but then again, if I do use the napalm launcher in close quarters, I am screwed. This is the final door, as far as I can tell. This is it. Teleporter pad, I'm gone. Oh, good logos. This might just be the boss fight. Boss fight forever? Guys? Let's do an ammo check really quickly. I have my pitchfork, my trusty pitchfork. I have 16 shots in the flare gun. 43 shots in the shotgun. That's a good point. Hold on. 49 in the napalm launcher, 50 sticks of dynamite. 
It puts me back. As it damn well should. Can you jump through the fall? You cannot. It doesn't teleport you when you stand on the pad, but when you cross its um, area of effect, I guess. Alright, I have 200 of everything. I think it might be time for the boss fight. If this is the boss fight, I have a check... Uh, it might have put a checkpoint over here, actually, I have no idea. I already have a save either way, so that's uh, reassuring. I don't wanna die. Hey, these walls will rotate as far as I can tell. Look at this arrangement. Oh, I don't like this. I don't like this at all. You're supposed to approach the center, aren't you? Am I supposed to pick this up? Uh, am I supposed to use the boots? <gasps> Panic rising. Oh. Well, they are quite full of pictures. Well, that was a complete waste of everyone's time, wasn't it? Oh. You spin me right round, baby. Right round, like a record. Using the pitchfork here might be the worst idea I have ever conceived. You know what, let's not use the pitchfork like an absolute moron, considering I have so much dynamite to spell, that I can't even pick all of it up. I guess these guys are mostly supposed to be portable health bags. <laughs> Let me guess, it'll keep spinning, won't it? Oh no, you get one room. <sighs> I don't hate the spooky child trope. And I... <sighs> Oh man, it brings back amazing memories. Kind of frustrating, but still. I should have gone though. Just locked myself out. No, 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 no. I mean, in my role-playing days, we had an, an interesting situation that hinged on the fact that my character was uh, kind of a loner, kind of an introvert. And um, the thing is, I was left in a room and people kind of expected me to explore the area, even though I was explicitly told to stay in that room. And, lo and behold, I actually chose to stay in the room, and the game mistress was fairly perplexed at that point. And she knew my character was completely... Um, Vampire the Masquerade. She knew my character was a complete... lunatic, basically. He was paranoid by... Whoa! No! No! No, no, hold on, hold on. Does it burn? Does it burn? Either way, the guy was a complete nutbag and wouldn't listen to anyone. He was just deadly afraid for his life, so... Of course he was a monkey. Well, yeah, that's the napalm launcher. I haven't really used that thing ever. But yeah, it works fairly well. You know what? Screw the story. A... I wouldn't do it justice that way. 
Either way, I've gone through at least two layers, and I'm fairly certain the next layer will be blue cultists. Spin me right round, right round, like a record. No, in person. Uh, obviously, in person. <laughs> Playing online by that point. In, uh, I think I had broadband by that point. I guess it wasn't that that far ago. Wait, this is the end of the level. Hold on, guys. I did it. Unless they they're gonna fake me out, which they will not. Nah, no, it was uh, back in... Oh man, it was back in middle school. A long time ago. For out of six secrets, quite a few kills. I did not get to that area below the rocket launcher thingies. This is it. This is it. It's map 7, Altar of Stone. This is the moment we have all been waiting for. Well, it was an above average performance as far as I can judge it by myself. It was. It was. I still have quite a few rule books that I bought after the time and I had... Uh, I had so many plans to start playing again, but I just... I, it's the same problem I had with pretty much everything else, I just did not have the people to do so. And that was kinda it. I never got back to it. Never. And I'm a fairly shy person, so... That, if that's his girlfriend, what is that? It's fairly ambiguous. Guys, I need to get through the boss fight. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Show yourself. Show yourself. God damn it! You will pay for this by the power of napalm. I have the napalm. Uh, it would have worked better as by the power of napalm. I have the launcher. Thirty-seven shots, bitch. And they're all coming for you. Well, not all of them. Some of them will miss. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. Missing. Yes, indeed. See, here's the deal. I have no idea whether he's invulnerable or not.
Whoopsie. Well, it doesn't kill you instantly. I know that much now. Ah, my nose itches! Probably all the stress. This might be a tricky boss fight where you have to trigger something. And I may just be wasting all of the damage on this guy. Pointlessly. Or maybe this is the, the good old Doom style to kill the Cyber Demon, shoot at it until it dies, sort of the boss fight. I tried touching my girlfriend. I mean, it's my girlfriend. Do you think I didn't have the... the proper consent in these circumstances? I have ran out of ammo and thus I will disengage. Whoa, whoa. No, no, no. Nope, nope, nope. Do I kill hell? Is that the way to go? Am I supposed to blow hell up? Guys, I'm confused. Perhaps there's something I have missed. Ow! Or maybe, just maybe, you are supposed to shoot at it until it dies. Yes! Yes, no. And that is the end of the first campaign. I'm just wondering um, whether there's anything noteworthy at the very end of the credits. You know, sometimes you get interesting messages at the very, very end. Sometimes you don't. Well, either way, it got to special thanks. It's either the it's either the end or there might be something here. No, I think it just loops all the way back. This is the beginning because I've I wasn't paying enough attention, I guess. Or is this the continuation of all of it? Yeah, that tends to happen. 
Voice talent, a single person. <laughs> and of course, there's the guy who developed the cultist lang. Yeah, this is looping. Of course, this isn't the only campaign you have in the game. That was just the way of all flesh. There are four more campaigns that I will get through eventually. But for now, for today, I think that was quite enough. I have beaten the first campaign. Or whatever you want to call it, then I'm quite satisfied with the result. Yeah. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys probably next week. We'll see. Yeah, I will. Thanks for watching, for to you guys live and to any people watching the VODs conceivably.